This is a recording of our lockdown Zoom drawing session. The session will consist of um, a presentation of an artist, Jim Dine, a contemporary American artist, um, and then some practice based partly on some ideas we talk about during the, pr the presentation and some of the other things we've been thinking about for the last few weeks, uh, space, negative space, and talking about contour drawing as well. So I'm just gonna share my screen, uh, make the presentation and then get into the practice. So that's what we're going to talk about, Jim Dine. Um, Jim Dine Jim Dine's a contemporary American artist. Um, he's getting on about now, he's 86. Um, spends a lot of splits of time between America and Europe. Um, and he's, uh, he's always, since a very young age, uh, when he was a young, as young as he can remember, he says he was convinced that he was a maker, he was an artist, he was a creator. Uh, that's why I've called it um, Jim Dine, the act of making. Um, he, he says, as a young man, a young boy, he encountered the work of the German um, expressionist uh, painters, printmakers from the 1920s. And people like Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, people like uh, uh, printmakers, uh, woodcut makers, and they have a big influence on him. And, and printmaking has always been a big part of his practice. Uh, printmaking and drawing, that's why I've, I'm looking partly at him, because we're look, focusing mostly on drawing just now during lockdown. Um, so there's also been, he, he's got a... a uh, a, a thread of uh, various themes that run through his work, motifs that run through his work, uh, that um, he, he works with again and again to express himself through. And he, his work has an autobiographical uh, reflection sort of at the heart of it. And that is expressed through these motifs that he uses um, uh, in his work. So I'll just show you. Some. So the first one I'm going to talk about um, these ideas that he worked with is, is bathrobes. Um, and I remember when I was a student at art school, fishing through the art school library and just chancing on a book of, about Jim Dine um, and seeing these, these bathrobes in there and the, their beautiful drawings, really well made. Um, and, but he started doing them. He, he took up the idea of bathrobes when he was, he lived, was living in New York um, in the 1960s, pretty sure. And he was part of what we would think of or might call the avant-garde. People don't really use that word anymore for the sort of cutting edge of, of art practice, but what we might call the avant-garde. Um, then, and pop art, he was part of that scene, although he, he vigorously says he was never a pop artist. Um, and he was doing things like happenings, that sort of idea. And he said he wanted to make uh, a self-portrait, uh, but as he said, it wasn't cool to make a self-portrait in those days. So he was looking for some, something else, some other way to uh, paint himself as he saw it. And he was looking at a magazine one day and he came across this, this picture of a bathrobe. So he thought, oh, that'll do. So he appropriated the idea of, of the bathrobe um, as a sort of surrogate self-portrait um, and, and has used them in that way since then. That idea kind of sort of sits in quite nicely with the, the old saying, the well-known saying that the artist paints only one picture or makes only one picture and that is of themselves. So he's sort of appropriated the, the bathrobe as a way of making an image of himself, of, of, of uh, working within that uh, motif to, to represent himself. And there's some more of them. The one on the right there, that's a, that's a woodblock print. Um, there's, he, he makes all sizes of prints. The woodblocks tend to be quite big. And um, that's probably about uh, three and a half feet by two and a half feet, that sort of thing. And he paints on them. He paints on his work a lot. He works over things. So each individual print is that, or very often, uh, worked into to make it uh, unique. Um, the one in the middle is a drawing, charcoal drawing, which has been drawn and rubbed and drawn and rubbed, so it gets this very ghostly feel to it. Um, and the one on the left is also a charcoal drawing with watercolour and other things uh, work, worked into them there. So the bathrobes are one of the motifs that he uses. Um, and the one in, in the middle there has it's a good example of space and negative space that we were talking about last week in the, the, the drawing session. And we'll look at that more as we go on. Um, the other, another idea that he works with, another motif that he uses a lot are antique sculptures. He, he, he felt, he, he says he, he feels, you know, because he's an artist, um, he feels the connection to art in the past, which I guess all artists do that, you know, we, we make art because people before us have made it, they've influenced us. Um, so he, he feels a strong connection to the sort of classical antique sculpture of ancient Greece, ancient Rome. And um, he, he was uh, looking for a way of, of working with that and he'd been walking through the streets of Paris one day, came and walked past a, one of these wee shops that sells um, plaster casts of things like um, classical sculptures and, and other bits and pieces. Um, and he, there was a Venus de Milo in, in the shop. So he went and he bought it. He had that and he wanted to work with it, but he felt too sort of um, um, 
over, not overwhelmed, but he, he didn't feel in total in, in ownership of the idea of these sculptures. So he knocked her head, knocked her head off, and he said, "Then, then I felt that I that it was more my my thing um, to make it his own." He knocked her head off. So the the image on the left there is the Venus de Milo with no head. Um, I think that's a woodblock that he's then painted in colours into, and the one on the right is a is I'm pretty sure is a drawing with colours in it. So he, he works in various different ways with the same idea. And, and these drawings here are from a series he did. He lives in Europe a lot. He spends a lot of time in Europe and I think he still has a place in New York, lives there. Um, but he did a series of drawings in the Giptotech Museum in Munich, um, where the, the uh, he was allowed to spend time in the museum by himself. So they'd lock the museum up at night and he'd be left in it so he could wander around as he pleased and draw the, they have a big collection of ancient um, classical sculptures there, plaster casts and originals. Um, and he could draw them, at, 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 draw them at his leisure. And he said it felt that it made him closer both to the, the sculptures, the idea of what they were, why he liked them, but also the people who made the sculptures, uh, the artists who, who made them. So he uses that sort of idea of classical sculpture. He gives him a, a tie to the past, a connection to the past, and to the, the, the uh, continuum that he's a part of as a maker, as an artist. Um, another um, sort of motif that he uses a lot is uh, hearts. There he's in the studio with a big heart and all. Uh, that's, he's a lot younger there, that's in the, in the past. And he said, um, well, he first used the, the, the image of a heart in a set design that he made in 1965 for Midsummer Night's Dream, but he adopted it as a sort of universal symbol. Well, it's a, a universal symbol of love, but um, he felt it was, and as he said, as good a structure geographically as any I could find in nature. It's a kind of landscape, and within that landscape, I could grow anything, and I think I did. Um, he, he liked the sort of formal simplicity of the heart, um, and he's, he's made it a subject that he sort of could claim wholly as his own. He thought it was an empty vessel um, for ongoing experimentation onto which he could project himself, and that's sort of a big thing about the, the self-portrait thing, projecting himself onto it, painting only one picture, and that's of himself. Um, it, it is this universal symbol of love, uh, and he said, what, what I was in love with was the fact that I was put here to make these hearts, this art. Um, and there's a similar sense of love in this method, this act of making art. So there are all those ideas mixed up in the idea of making hearts as well. Um, and those, those are three more. The one in the middle is a woodblock. It looks like it's um, paint brushes, brush marks um, on a surface, but it's not. It's a woodblock print that's been cut out with um, with the chisel and printed. Um, really, really lovely piece of work. When you see close-ups of it, it's really, really a beautiful thing to see. Um, and the ones on either side there, they're also prints, but they've been worked into, uh, he's, he's painted color into those. Um, so he, he very often does that. So that's heart, another motif he does. And a motif that he's sort of taken on more recently, those ones have been going for quite a long time is the idea of Pinocchio. He said as a young boy, he saw the film in 1940 with his mother um, and he latched onto this idea of Pinocchio sort of giving the, the wooden boy life, giving the model life. Uh, um, and that sort of had, had an, uh, an impact on him. And he, he, he bought a paper mache model of Pinocchio from some shop and he, he carried around with him for, for a long time. And it wasn't until, the, wasn't until the 1990s that he started doing anything with it. Uh, making these images uh, using using uh, Pinocchio as a motif to, through which to express himself. Um, but more latterly, he's taken on working with the idea of Geppetto, Geppetto being the old man who makes, uh, gives life to uh, Pinocchio. And the, the image there in the middle at the bottom is an image of a self-portrait of Jim Dine as Geppetto. Um, so that's another of the motifs that he does. And then the two the last two sets I'm going to talk about, two that I kind of gravitate to more, are the tools. Now, the, the tools are really beautiful um, images that he makes. And he, as a young boy, his grandfather owned a hardware store and he, he lived with his grandparents for, long, for quite a long time. And um, he used to hang out in the shop and, and in his grandfather's workshop and play with the tools. And he, he was allowed to do that. Um, and he said he was attracted to the endless, endless variety of shapes and functions uh, for, in the art of, of making. Um, and, and he, he found the, the 
mysterious and interesting, they were an in, mysterious and inter, interesting object as any other object. And he said there was no other, there was no aristocracy here. So he, he liked the utilitarianism of them. Um, and of course, it's a, it's a, it's a, a motif that symbolizes the act of creation, uh, where materials are transformed into, or maybe transformed into art or whatever they may be made into. Um, he sees them as prim primary objects that create a, a connection with the human past and the hand. So that was part of the um, attraction for him uh, for doing the, the tools and they're really nice things. Uh, they're mostly etchings these, I think certainly the one on the right there is an etching, the one on the left maybe, but I'm not sure it might be a drawing. They're, those are certainly etchings and I quite like that in the, the large one on the left there. He, um, he, he puts a, his print of his hand in the glove and I, I spoke a couple of presentations ago about the, those hands on cave walls, you know, people leaving the mark of, of this is me, here I am. Um, and that strikes me that that's what he's doing there. Although he's got a glove on, a working glove again, I guess. Um, so yeah, the, the, the tools um, that he does, images are beautiful things. They're, they're a metaphor for, for work, for the act of creation. Um, and he, he makes sculptures as well, and, and he sort of mixes ideas up. Uh, that's Pinocchio, um, the boy being made with the tools of making that uh, piece is called The Philosopher. Um, and there he mixes the hearts with the tools also. Just mixing up the, uh, the motifs he's working with. The last one I'm going to talk about is uh, plants. He is he's a gardener, um, but the, 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 the plants are, the, he's not trying to create um, botanical illustrations. He's making an expressive response to the idea um, of plants, of, of, of growth, that sort of thing. Um, and he... Uh, uh, last year, uh, year 2020, he, he had to have an apartment in Paris with a garden. That's him in it, uh, working with the garden, with the plants. He, he says he's always been a gardener um, and he's drawn to the plants. Um, they sort of excite him. Um, he is, he's trying to capture the way they look, you know, the, the stem, the leaf, the flower, whatever it is, for the way it is. But, uh, and also to, for, to convey the sense of growth or decay, or, of, of, of organic substances. So you're looking at the idea of time, renewal, mortality, that sort of thing as well, when he's painting his flowers. Um, they're not botanical illustrations, they are creative responses to, to those ideas. Um, and that's a, um, a nice illustration. It's a wood, wood cut, I'm pretty sure on the right. Um, and I'm not sure on the left. The um, space and negative space, which, we, which we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, and um, we'll look at again today. Um, as is that, I think the one on the left is almost certainly a lithograph. It looks like a lithograph to me. Um, the one on the right, I'm not sure, drawing or etching. So anyway, that's the, the presentation about Jim Dine. Um, and we're going to move into the practice now. I'll just stop that share. Um, first thing we're going to do is uh, look at the idea of um, contour drawing. So, come to that bit in a minute, hang on. That around. So um, I, I suggested to people for in the, the actual sessions that they have a, an orange or, or an apple or something like that. And we're going to look at this, this idea of, of contour drawing. So I've got, I've got a real orange here and it's better, it's better to do this exercise from a, a real object rather than from the image here. I've just got it to here to, to illustrate uh, the idea to you. Um, but on the screen, the, the real orange or the, or the image of the orange make no difference really because they're flat on your screen. So I'll stick to the real orange because it's, it's bigger. But we're going to think about that sort of idea there. But if you, when you, if you want to do this, if you're going to do this, try and do it from a real, real of apple or orange, something like that. Um, so using lines, to dis lines, contours to describe an object. Um, so and I quite like the idea of an apple and orange because they're not regular. It's not that not just getting a football or, or a tennis ball or something out and drawing doing that. They've got they do have a, a irregularity to them. So you need to look at them. Um, so contour drawings are obviously line drawings. So you to 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 express or to show what this looks like, we might normally you know use some sort of um, shading, some value. To, create, to show the form of the object, but I want to do it with lines, with contours to create this sort of thing. And what I mean, I'm gonna draw on this to show you the kind of idea I'm sort of wanting to illustrate. Working from this bit where the, where the stem would stick out, you know, thinking about, you know, 
what's the actual shape? If I draw lines to describe the shape of this orange, that's the sort of thing I would do. And then this way, I would do that sort of thing. So I'm trying to describe the form of this object by doing that. So you would, you know, start off with your outer edge, probably. Work out where you're, where you're starting from. This one's done the other way around. It's a similar thing, just done the other way around. Um, and look at, you know, I'm trying to get it in, in perspective, but where, where the lines, you know, So anyway, you kind of get the idea. I'm looking for you to create when when um, when uh, animators and people who make these uh, uh, 3D animation films when they start off creating a character, they they, they make um, well they used to. I don't know if they still do. I imagine they still do. What they call a wireframe model, a three three dimensional digital wireframe model of um, of the character which is very much what this is, is wireframe, although we're not going, they will do it all the way around. Um, so we're trying to use contours, lines, to describe the shape. And we're gonna think about that a wee bit more, you know, how, how we use lines to describe shape um, as we go through the other exercises. So this is a, a wee short introduction to what we're going to do uh, in, the, in the other exercises. So a contour drawing of, um, of an orange or an apple or something like that. So start off with that. Then what I want to do is um, move into uh, the main, the, the, the two main drawings of the session. Uh, and they're going to, they're, yet again, they work from photographs because uh, doing these, that's what we're gonna work with. And that's what we're going to uh, try to create, okay? Um, yeah, because you're working off a screen, it. it it's uh, even if I have the thing in front of me, it's still flat on your screen. Um, and it's easier for me to, to demonstrate if it's there right directly in front of you. Um, my, my demonstration also. So there's this um, plant. I got it from the polytunnels uh, opposite. It's a bit sad, a bit old. I don't think James Love is ever going to sell it. Um, but it's nice. I like it because I put it against a bit of black card, light shining on it. So we get these um, lines, these these lines of, of the stems of the plant and the negative shapes in between. So shape and negative shape or space and negative shift space. But, um, and then, you know, there's also, there's, there's the shape of the pot, the perspective of the pot and the, and the other things going on in here. So we're gonna uh, look at uh, rendering a drawing of this and you'll end up with, well, if, if you do it the way that I'm suggesting, you'll end up with something like this, uh, perhaps. Um, I'm going to use uh, just pencil, uh, just the, I have these graphite sticks uh, which I like quite a lot. They're just they're solid graphic. They're 8B, so they're very soft. Uh, it means I can move quite quite fast uh, doing the examples. Um, so that's why I'm going to, but you can draw with anything. You can draw with charcoal. You can draw with, um, you can use uh, watercolor washes, anything you like. Um, shape shape the, the task to, to what you have or to what you want it to be. Um, you don't necessarily have to stick. But I'm, I'm sticking to the pencil thing uh, because during, uh, during lockdown, people have, may not have um, a huge variety of materials. So that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do, and um, we'll put this aside and show you what I'm going to do. So I've got a bit of paper here that I have, uh, again, um, defined a rectangle on now. It's, it's it, as I said, it's easier for me because I have a photograph right next to my bit of paper so I can just map across. It's a bit harder for you because you're on the screen. But what I want you to do, so first thing is, don't make a don't do a, a really huge drawing with this. Um, there's a bit of filling in, a bit of sort of laborious uh, stuff going on in this. So, 
to make the task um, more concise, a bit shorter, make it, I would say, A4 maximum. Um, and the, what I want you to do is to put a ground onto the bit of paper. So, and, and to do that, just get a pencil and a pencil sharpener and just sharpen your pencil onto the, um, onto the bit of paper. So you end up with these little bits of graphite, throw away the bits of wood, throw them on the floor. And I've got this, um, oops, sorry. I've got this makeup pad that I, uh, or this uh, bit of cotton wool makeup pad thing. Um, I got, and I'm just going to use that to, to rub up. Um, just going to rub that into the paper, the graphite into the paper, just with the, uh, the but you can do it, use your fingers, you can use a tissue, you can use anything um, to rub it in. So you end up with something like that. So you put a ground onto the bit of paper that you can then work into. So that's your sort of surface prepared. Just sharpen your pencil and rub the, the graphite shavings into the bit of paper to create the ground. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, and it, it doesn't need to be perfectly flat and, flat and, and even, it's fine, um, is, is actually create the, the basis for the pot. So, think about, so the, the pot has, a, has a, an, an ellipse, an oval at the top there, seen, you know, a circle seen in perspective. And when you, when you look at a circle in perspective, the, the, the widest part will always be parallel with your plane of vision. So if I was to move around this part, the, the widest part would move around also. But, so it's there and, it, and it's parallel with the, the bottom of the piece of paper. So there's as much uh, pot above that, the, the, middle, the, the middle axis above it as there is below it. It's also symmetrical that way. So it's symmetrical both ways. Uh, but um, focus on this. So you, I want you to uh, perhaps you know, create, now it's easier for me, I can, I can just map it straight across, create the axis that goes across the middle of the, um, of, the of this oval circle. Now, the couple, one thing here, when people very often draw um, ellipses, um, they will draw them, they'll do that, okay? The, but they're not pointed at the ends, they're round, they'll, they'll it'll be like that. It won't be pointed, okay? So think about that when you're drawing it. It doesn't have sharp edges. So it's about, you know, that sort of width. And when I, when I draw these things, I tend to, you know, work around it a wee bit. That's not bad. Yeah, that'll do just now. And there's this, um, there's this lip uh, edge on it that comes down does that and we'll be thinking about how we're going to uh, show the shape of that and then it goes the pot does that so we have a bit high up the pot but never mind and the pot does that okay so you got the the basis of the pot there now I want to think about the uh, the um, these stems for the uh, of, of the plant should be a bit lower. Anyway, we'll come to that. So if that's the top bit, so the, the plant starts about here. I want to think about these stems. Um, and I've got some rubber. So we're going to be doing some um, something we've done before, which is reductive drawing. So I've got rubbers. I've, I've sort of chopped one up so it's a wee bit thinner. And we're going to draw with the rubber. So we, we end up with, uh, with the eraser. So we end up with these... Um, um, plant stems here. So just going to do something like that. Now, try to remember this. You're not trying to make a botanical illustration. This is sort of, sort of a, a, a creative response, if you like. I'm trying to, to um, show you a couple of techniques using, using, you know, for instance, using the rubber to draw with to do the reductive drawing. So don't worry if it's not a perfect facsimile of the, the photograph we're looking at. This is about the, 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 um, the ideas we're using to make the drawing and, and uh, how the drawing looks in the end. It's not, it's not about copying a perfect photograph. Um, So 
So some of these lines will be, be a wee bit thick, a wee bit thicker than they are on the on the thing. And that I may may do something about that later on. And if you get something that doesn't, you're not happy with, you can just rub over it and uh, need to create a bit more space. So once you've done that, once you've um, created this sort of uh, lattice work of, um, of, of white silhouettes. Um, what I want you to do is, is pretty much to create this, the, the, the negative shape in behind using the pencil. Now, you might, there are, there are shadows on the wall here. You might make it you know, less, slightly less um, dark in here at the back. Hang on, I'm doing this. So um, you want to work with all these negative spaces and all these um, background is dark so you so the uh, the stems of the plant are more in relief so they stand out more So when you're done, you should end up with something sort of like that. Quite strong silhouette, shape, negative shape. It's um, it's not a the most perfect uh, rendering of the of the stems of the plant. Um, but as I say, it's it's not. I'm not trying to create a botanical illustration. It's about the um. The techniques we're using, the expressive quality of the medium, that sort of thing. So, uh, next thing we're going to think about is, um, well, think about this uh, this moss, this sort of mossy area in here where, where the uh, where the earth is. It's quite an old plant, um, and all this moss has grown over the, the top of the earth. So, we're going to think about that. We need to look at where this edge is, the edge of the moth, moss, and it's about the same depth. Is this the lip of the pot here that comes round? This this lip here on on the inside. So we need to create some sort of you know, something like that that corresponds to the um, lip that's on the outside. Okay. So there's that there, and, and once you've done that, what I want you to do is to take your rubber and um, think about the, bring the, the rim out. So go around the rim again, just to make that rim pop out. So we're gonna go back to the, 
the stocks, the actual the actual stock things later on. I want to to look at the pot before we do that. Um, so just kind of drawing in the the rim of the pot again, but with the rubber to make it pop a wee bit more, to make it uh, a bit more prominent. So there you go, the rim of the pot. And the other thing that the pot has is um, just here, it's got that little ledge just inside, it's got two, but I'm not worrying too much about the bottom. I'm gonna put the top one in, so, uh, it's a nice little detail. Um, and to do that, I'm gonna just draw a line below the rim, about half a, half a centimeter down below the rim, like that. And take my pencil. Now I'm I'm doing the I'm I'm drawing the um, the pot using contour lines. When when I first did the the first example of this that I that I that I made, um, I started doing contour lines rather like the the, the orange bar was going round rather than the up up and down lines, which I also did there. And but the round ones I did, didn't like very much, so I wanted to use a a, a regular. Um, not exactly mechanical, but regular contour line to, sh to show the regular nature of, of the pot itself. So we're going to look for, to create something like this. And we're going to, at the, at the top, to create these, first of all, these little hatchy marks here to, to show this, this top bit of the pot. So between the, the line you've, you've rubbed out and the, and the line you've just drawn, I want you to do those little vertical hatchy marks. And they, you know, as, as we build the drawing, they, the different marks we use, they, they bring a different texture, a different interest, um, different variety to the drawing. So you end up with that, first of all, and then you leave a little, little gap where you drew that line, just leave that gap and draw longer lines, vertical lines all the way to the bottom. So that gap suggests that little, that little um, turn, little return in, in the pot itself. So they, you end up with the, the inside the top of the pot looking a bit like that. Okay, the outside is a, a, a similar idea, same idea. Just work out where you want your the lip of the pot to stop. And then similar thing. Now, the, this graphite stick I'm using, the 8B graphite stick, it's really, it's really soft. And it, so the, the, the pointy end disappears quite quickly. So I get quite dark, broad marks, um, which you may not, if you're just using an ordinary pencil, you might not get that. You just have to make perhaps more. Uh, you might need to lean harder. So and I guess another thing I haven't talked about much is, is weight of line, uh, but we'll talk about that in a minute from, from you think about the, this mossy bit in the middle. Um, and then to the bottom bit. So you then create, same again, vertical uh, contour lines straight down, um, starting from this, and they'll, it, it'll separate it because there won't be a continuation of the first lines. In other words, you'll see the two different planes, two different areas, because they're not continuations of the first line. Well, not supposed to be anyway. Nice. So that's your, your pot done with vertical contour lines. Um, now we're going to think about uh, the moss before we come and finish off with these the stems from the plants. Um, and the moss itself is quite a it's quite a, a sort of organic, random kind of feel to it. And the the, the video that's I think on. Uh, already of when we did the um, the collage of the owl at night time 
we made a we made a, a night sky when we did that, and the night sky consisted of marks that were really um, kind of random. This, you know, I'm doing them just that sort of thing, and that's the kind of mark I want to use for um, for for the moss. So we're using a, a variety of marks in the drawing which bring interest, bring variety to the drawing. So um, down here. You know, and I talked about variety of mark. So you might take, so sometimes you'll lean hard on it, variety of line. And sometimes take the pressure off and make a, make a lighter line, okay? To bring variety to, to the depth within the texture. And then you can also bring in little kind of dotty hatchy things like that, which will bring differences. And there are there are leaves and there are more solid shapes that you can bring in also to bring variety to that. And there's little bits of threads of, of roots and bits and pieces. Put those in as well that you, your, your, your random mark will go around. Okay, so that's how we're going to draw the um, this mossy bit in here. Okay, so it's a very random organic mark with some some light bits, some some dark bits. So some bits you'll make the, the line heavy. You lean on lean on the pencil if that's what you're using, or the charcoal, or whatever. And other bits um, make it, make the mark quite light to bring variety to the surface. So there you go, you'll end up with something like that. So you see the kind of organic sort of random shape to suggest the, the moss of the surface. So variety of mark bringing variety to the drawing. The last thing we're gonna do is look at the, the stems of the plant um, and what we're gonna do with them. So the first thing you might look at, I've been using this big graphic, so you might find it easier if you're doing using one of these to use something a wee bit finer for this, you might want to define the edges a wee bit more. So the first thing you probably want to look at is what's overlapping what. So when you when something overlaps something else, you'll see the, the edges of that thing. So this one is in front of that. So you see the, the edges of, of this, perhaps the main one there now, there you go, drawn. Yeah, so that's thinner. So you might want to, Think about thickness of some of your lines. Some of them mine are too thick um, to do that. Okay. Oh, pencil. So what's overlapping? What thickness of the stems you've drawn? Um, I'm missing a couple, it doesn't matter. Draw in now. Got in the wrong place, doesn't matter. 
go over there. So for instance, this overlaps that and that. So you take those edges over. And it's also darker. So it's about bringing some, this part is about bringing some, some uh, texture, some definition to the, to the stems. It does that. Some of these stems have um, little bits of sort of barky sort of feel to them, bits of bark on them, yeah, that sort of idea. Um, if I hold the photograph closer, you just see the variety in some of them, like areas of lightness and darkness, little irregularity. Some of them have, you can see the form, the shape, the roundness of them. So and to do that, what you might do is, So if I do it sort of larger scale, you've got the a stem like that, and you've got the dark, dark edge there, and then the dark edge. There. A few things you might do. So if you want to show the the roundness, the shape, the volume of it, um, you can, you know, if there's light say coming from from there. You put a value on it, then another value to that helps to show the, the, the form of it by putting some sort of, I know they're much thinner and it's harder to do, but um, that does it. Sometimes just a bit of something down the middle does, does the same thing. Some of them have these little irregularities. So you might take that kind of random mark and it's this part is really about just bringing some, some life and perhaps some shape um, and lightness and darkness to the stems themselves. So work into that with, I'm going to work into it with a, with a smaller pencil than, than the big um, thing that I had to do most of it. So like I say, working out what's in front of what, creating those overlapping lines, and then just some variety to the, to the surface. Sometimes just a line down the middle helps to do it. So, but this exercise, it's, it's about creating a drawing that looks like um, the, the sort of pot plant, but it's thinking about the ideas of um, things like shape, negative shape, contour, variety of mark, weight of mark, um, line, overlapping shapes, that sort of thing. So practicing thinking about and making, giving those ideas um, uh, voice, giving it a life. So I'm working to be a bit quick here, but it's fine. So 
So obviously I haven't put, put in all of the stems, um, just enough to give it, to illustrate what I'm trying to do. That's uh, although you can keep working on it and uh, refining it, but you kind of get the idea. So uh, you ground your paper uh, with the, the graphite, uh, sharpening a pencil, rubbed it in, uh, created the lines that the of these um, these stems with your rubber, created the the idea of the pot to start off with, um, then. Contour marks, parallel contour lines, uh, vertical, um, just to show the re regularity. It's a different way of brings more variety, different kind of mark making uh, to show the pot. Um, and then the sort of squiggly random stuff to do the with, with different weights of line to show the, uh, the, the mossiness and there's dots in there and solid bits of tone. And then just some variety to the, uh, to the stems themselves, defining what overlaps in what. Uh, when you're doing that uh, to give it a bit more shape also. Um, and that's uh, your pot plant. Um, there you go. So another thing I'm going to look at um, in the this video is um, well the contour lines. And I've got, you know, the idea of contour lines in nature. So I've got this rock that I picked up um, and the the, the sort of strata of the, of the rock, various layers of rock that has been created are contour lines. They show the shape of the rock. So this, the way this line does that, it shows the, the shape, the form of the rock. If you, oops, I'm not doing very well. There, these lines here, they show the shape of the rock. Um, and we're gonna think about that, those sort of contour lines in nature. Uh, and so the next drawing we're going to work with is um, based on um, this piece of wood that I found in my garage um, from a fire. Uh, and I'm interested in these the lines of the grain, how they show the form, the shape of, of the wood. OK, now these are slightly different from the ones we did of, of the both the pot and the orange, which are which are much more um, mechanical. Uh, these, these are more sort of um, organic they, contour lines. They kind of break up a bit um, and they, 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 they define the edges of little facets, that sort of thing. Um, so we're gonna look at that and I've got a, a picture of that one again. There, like that. Um, and a couple of examples. So it's that sort of thing we're gonna be thinking of making. So we're gonna use um, this idea, you know, of, of the reductive idea. We're going to start the drawing, this drawing with the, um, the graphite shavings like we did the last one. Um, and, 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 we're, and then work into it as we did before. Um, and another version of the same thing. So that sort of idea, those, that sort of um, contour, contour drawing. So I've got a bit of paper, same thing, not, not too big. Um, oops. And we're going to 
sharpen the pencil onto it. Get rid of the wooden shavings. And just rub those in once again to create a sort of ground on the bit of paper. So there, that'll do. And the next thing I want to do is to work out where the the edges of the shape, the, the um, so because I've created this edge to my drawing, it kind of corresponds to the edge of the of the of the photograph, if you like. Um, so it's easier to work out where things are, you know, relative to the edge of the. The edges, where's that point from there and from there? It's about there. So you can start you know, drawing from So you're trying to find the out, outside edge, the outside contour, if you like, the, um, the overall shape of the object. Yeah, that'll do. So you've got that there. Now, what I want you to do is to start working with your, um, with your rubber like that. to start um, you know, working on the one to, to create the light and dark as you see in the, in the photograph, but also to, to start drawing the, the contour lines. So you, you, you're looking for um, you know this sort of shape and they do the, the on an object like this you know they break up and become a wee bit um uh, or you know sort of random and organic they're not as they're not as uh, mechanical as we we looked at before but that's a part and they, they 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 do describe the character the shape and the character of what it is you're looking at
In this dark area in here, I'm going to use that sort of similar um, heavy vertical line. You might do that, you might do it another way, you might do it with a, with a wash or whatever, it's up to you, but um, see what you make of it. Um, outside the drawing, one of the things that helps to um, give it presence is the, the darker background, so. Give some context. Accentuate the shape. Oh. So I'm drawing the contours with both the the rubber and the, and with the pencil. Doing that kind of.
We'll leave it at that. So there you go. Um, thinking about contour lines um, in this drawing, as uh, um, as well as the form, the shape, negative shape, as with uh, this in this drawing also. Um, so if you've got these these exercises are probably. They're, they're certainly valuable to do from the image on the on the exercise on the video. But if you have an interesting bit of wood lying around uh, with with grains with with uh, lines that describe the shape, the form, try drawing that. Or if you've got a plant with a lot of stems um, lying about, put it against something which has a contrasting background and try to draw it in a similar way using a variety of marks. Um, and that was the video. A, yeah, I will put, I'll put all of the images on the video at the end so you can see them all. Okay, I hope that was good for you all and I will be back with more later on. Okay, bye.